Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to do a border and I'm going to show you how to do it on this little wall hanging here. So the first thing you've got to decide are what colors to choose. Well I think it would really look good with the red but I don't have the red because this is a piece of felt and I don't have that bright bright red which I think would really pal this. So I have chosen two different fabrics. This green and this blue. So I'm going to put one of the greens on one and one of the blues on the other. So let me show them to you together here to give you an idea. I think they're going to work out pretty well. The reason I'm doing this video is Megan is getting ready to do a blanket and she said she does not know how to do it so I thought I would show it in a really simple way. So First, we're going to cut out our fabric. I always cut it out two and a half. I'm going to cut one of them out two and a half and one of them out two so you can see the difference if there is a difference to your eye. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so here is the two inch mark that I have on my, I'm gonna to try to avoid the lights here. There's the two and a half inches all the way down and we're going to cut ourselves some strips. This is the width of the fabric, and it's folded one time. Here's the fold down here. And based on my quilt, let me put it out here on this table. Now, keep in mind that folded means, and if I looked at this, I would say two strips will do one side, two strips will do the other side, which makes our four sides. This would be, th these two could go on the left and the right, and then the next two would be on the top and the bottom. The problem with that thinking is you would shortchange yourself because these all must be attached to each other. So you've got to allow for the quarter inch each time, and then you want a little extra when it comes to cutting it and um, closing it up, or else you'll be stressed if you've got a smidgen. So I would cut three of these so it gives you six strips. You can always take the extra strips and do something with them. Always keep your scraps when it comes to these strips because you're not going to ever know if you want to do some kind of rainbow border on something. So let's go ahead and we're going to cut three of these out which give us six. Now some of you are thinking, well wait a minute, what if I've got something bigger than a wall hanging? This is where you want to do your baby quilt measurements, your lap quilt, all the way up to a king. You want to take your tape measure. And I know some of you will be shocked thinking, I know that it is the exact, it's either squared, rectangle, whatever. And so in your mind, <coughs> you made this and you know that from here to here, on the right is the same as the left. But let's double check it. So we're going to go, I'm going to go up to the one on here. So we're going to add an inch because you never know how much of this little thing right here they put on your tape measure. So go up to the one, come all the way down, and it says 19 inches if I add my inch. I go over here and do the same thing. And yes, it just happens to be 19 inches. Now you go in the middle of your quilt. And let me go first. I'm going to just measure to see. So now I have 19 and 3 quarters. And 19 and a little bit more than 3 quarters. So what you want to do is you want to add this direction in the middle. which is 19, this direction in the middle, which is almost, nope, it's a, well, I need to move that a little bit. So we've got 18 and three quarters right there. So that is going to give you the measurements because you will add up all four of these and that's the binding you need. So don't just go up here at the top and measure it because your top might not be equal to your bottom. Maybe you skewed it a little bit. 
Now, if you put too much binding, and when I say too much, this is 19 inches. If I took 20 inches and I tried to force it into this binding, I'm gonna have extra binding. If I take less and I really pull it, I'm gonna end up with waviness because this fabric's not gonna be giving at all. This doesn't give, okay? It's not on the bias, so I can't go and make it be longer than it is. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're putting them on. So if you're learning and you're new, I would start small first because any kind of problem problem that you come up against, you can fix it while it's small. And then on a piece of paper, always keep a notebook uh, paper and pencil next to you for jotting down information. I have mine over here to the right. So that let's say that you've made yours and you got done and now it's like it's almost been pulled too tight. I mean, you can tell that it's pulled real tight. Well, that meant your binding wasn't big enough. Maybe you only needed to give it a quarter of an inch. All right? If that's the case, you need to make a note that you made it too small. You need to give it a quarter inch. Until you've got this entire thing finished, which is what I'm talking about, when you put your binding on, until you have it sewn, you can always take it apart and fix it. Always. And if that's what it takes, fine. There were times when I first started out that I thought I had a square, and I definitely did not have a square. You can either cut it down to make a square or leave it like it is. Nobody's gonna know it but you, unless it's like inches off, then you know everybody's gonna see it because your eye would be drawn to it. But if you're, you could be an entire inch off on a large quilt on the right side or the left side or the top, nobody's gonna see it unless you use a busy border. And when I say a busy border, if your border was stripes or it was, I mean, your binding, not your border. Well, even your border, as a matter of fact, let's say you did a piano border. Well, when you got down and you were matching up the, the piano border, the ends of them, by the time you got down to one, it's going to be off. So maybe only half of the piano, I'm going to call it the key, would be in it. Well, yes, you're going to know it that way. But if you're just doing solid borders, this is all this is all busy, but it's the same busyness. It's nothing that stands out about this for it to be off a fourth of an inch, a half inch, or anything like that. The only way you, that I could tell if this was way off was when I put this border on and it didn't match up here. That had been the only way because I didn't come all the way down and I didn't create a border uh, like um, mitered corners on it. That'd be the only way. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. You'll learn that when you go on. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you the first thing you're going to do is we're going to be sewing our pieces together because we want one long strip. So let's do that first. So I've kept this really simple because my border, I mean, excuse me, I keep saying my border, I mean my binding is going to be a solid color. Now, if it was a different color, it'd be a different story. But also, because this is a solid, there is no right or, the, or wrong side unless you believe you see one side darker or lighter. So I'm not having to match to make sure anything has to go exact. So what you're going to do and I advise you for your first time to go as simple and easy as you can on yourself. Otherwise, it's just like anything else. If you make something hard the first time around, you're never going to want to repeat it. So always go easy. So we're going to sew from corner to corner. So what I'm going to do is I am marking with a water soluble, because this is, I mean, not water, but iron soluble, I should call it. That's if I could get it to mark. There we go. So that you can see it, we're gonna uh, we're going to actually stitch on this line. This is one way that you can do. The other way that you would do it, and we're not going to do it that way, but you can do it if you just feel like you cannot attempt that. That that's just way beyond you at this point. Make it simple on yourself and just go like this. And stitch your quarter inch straight down there. So you do what you can do. You can always come back and learn this on another piece of fabric. 
or if you just don't have enough fabric and you have to do it that way, that's fine also. Let's go ahead and we're going to sew this one and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew the other one. And here's what a lot of people run into. Let me show you. Okay, so there's that one there. We're going to take this one. We're going to lay it out here. We're going to lay it down on here. I have a, a little bit of selvage here that I'm trying to get off of. That's the reason it's off there on each side instead of right on it. I don't want to get that in my seam. And usually when you have a whole long piece of this, you're not thinking about sewing all your pe or pinning all your pieces all at the same time because there'd be a whole bunch of pins all over the place so you wait till you get it up there well here's going to be the problem if you didn't match them up and this is all going the same way and you accidentally had this on the other side then when you get over to it your seam will be on one side and your seam will be on the other instead of being on the same exact sides so let's go ahead and sew this my thread with my project if you don't have a bobbin that matches your top thread, what you want to do, color-wise, is go a little lighter in the bobbin whenever you do this. I use my normal stitch, the 2.5, and I use the 12-inch needle. Unless you're using some really heavy-duty fabric, which I can't imagine. I'm just going to chain stitch this. And I'm going to take my pens out and I'm going to cut it and open it. Alrighty, so you're just going to cut this. I take my ruler up there. I give it a quarter inch seam. I'll go ahead and I'll take the little, uh, we call them wings, dog ears. Take those off. like that and then it lays like this do the next one and actually you could do your dog here right now if you feel more comfortable with it because it can go either way as you can see and then take your quarter inch off like that and now we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to iron now I have this white fabric here because Megan and I use a very hot iron <clears throat> and when we do it scorches the ironing pad and I would rather it scorch this fabric which I have already used for so many things it's just an extra piece and then I'm going to fold this in half and a lot of you won't be able to work with this because it will be too small. Because I just took a two inch and now it's become one inch. But I'm going to show you so you can do it with an inch. A lot of people will even use three inches. So it's going to be your preference. Uh, like I said, I like to use the two and a half. I have used the three before. Just depending on the quilt. And you want to be real careful so you don't stretch because this is on the bias so you want to make sure it stays put otherwise when you get finished you'll have a great big huge piece either top or bottom that won't be fitting up against anything and then I'm going to flip it over and let's iron this I think I just did it wrong didn't I up oh, okay well let's just start over I should have. I thought it was right side up and it wasn't. Actually, I thought it was upside down where I saw, had the seam up, but I did not. As you can see, I'll show you. See, if I went like that, the seam would be on the outside. I thought I had the seam upward, so let's just start right here. Okay. 
I think I heard something outside. Somebody shut their door. Okay, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. You're, you're good. Good boy. So we'll just go back this way. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. There we go. And this fabric's pretty well forgiving, this piece of cotton. Lots of them, once you put that seam in there, boy, it's hard to get that seam out, but this is a pretty forgiving piece of fabric. I've had this fabric for a long time. It just added to my stash of solids. I try to do that when they go on sale. I buy yardage of the, of the solid. Because you never know when you're going to need a solid. Alrighty, and I met up with this part right here. So just go ahead and finish ironing yours. And then when we're done, I'm going to show you what you can do in the way of preparing it for using it. This thing is a baby buddy. At least that's what I call it. And what you do is you take it and you put your fabric like this to get it started. And then all you do is wrap it on there like this and just keep wrapping. Let's see if I can get it untangled here. Just like that okay so when it's all wound up it's like that and normally I will prepare mine before I'm finished with everything else it's got a little dowel rod in there goes in there fits just like that that's it that's all there's to it and then it will twirl around a circle as the binding comes off so let me get that set up with my little project here and I'm going to show you what I do. So when I begin, you're going to put your rough edges together like this. I will pin it here because this is my extra. So I leave that set aside. I'll start right here. I'll lock it in place and come down to the bottom. Then I'm going to show you what we do when we get all the way here to the bottom. Now to give this more room I go to the edge of my foot like right here I don't go all the way over there it's on a straight stitch a 12 needle two and a half inch stitch I'm going to come all the way down to the end it will have a, a little extra when I pin it so I'm not pulling it tight I'm just pulling it taut Now what you want to do with this is you want to come off and you can mark it with your pen if you want because you don't quite know where your quarter inch is. So I would take the fabric, which you can see right here. My needle is down in there. This is a quarter inch right here. And I want to come off my fabric when I reach that quarter inch. I want to stop. So I'm going to come down. It's right there. I'm going to turn this and I'm going to come off. I don't need to lock it into place or anything. I'm just coming off of it. That's all I'm doing. Will be easier for what I need to do next because I need to take this and go like that as if I was coming straight off the fabric at an angle like that finger press it so it lines up right here then I want to fold it back on itself and line it up with the side just like this so it's lined up right there If you need a ruler in there to help it, come back, go forward. Let's move this little guy over here, which will help me. 
I want it to come straight like this, but I also want it to come right down the edge like this so that it comes right down here. And then with your finger, you could actually do this right here, which is what I normally do, because I'm gonna put my needle in back here. Okay, so because now what I wanna do, let me put a pin in it to show you. So I want to come a fourth of an inch up like this and now here it is right here so I came down here my stitch would normally come all the way down there I can actually put a little point right here and I'm gonna want it to be a quarter of an inch so a quarter of an inch is up here let me just draw a line we're not gonna see this anyway this all gets ironed over Let's see if I can put my mark on it. Oh, my pen does not want to mark. Okay. And this is what you're looking at because this is when you fold it over, it was right there. Make sure it's in the camera. And you always want to make sure that your fabric is still on this line right here. It's going the other direction now. It's going straight across from you. Let's turn this this way so you can see it. It should look like that because you're going to come right down here. Let's put another pin in there. Just to hold it. So it should look like this. I want to make sure it's in the camera. This needs to go over a little bit more. We want to make sure, there we go, that it stays in there. Hold on one second, I gotta get my, I don't wanna poke my machine bed there. All right, there we go. We're trying to keep this as straight as we can. As we come down here, I guess I didn't have enough pins in it. And you can use clips or pins, but you want to come straight down here from this fold right here. And you can use your fingernail or whatever to make the fold because you're going to start right here, which is a quarter inch from the corner there. And you're going to start sewing right here where it left off. So that you can see that just like that. Make sure there's enough light. Okay, let's continue to sew that. Now it would be good to have a camera person, but she's not here. So I've got it a quarter of an inch, just like before, and I'm just going to slowly start sewing. And you can back stitch here. And then just take out the pins as I go. And what I can do is turn around and put another pin down here, and I just keep two pins going. If you prefer clips, you can use clips. But I'm always going to keep it on the side here, on the edge. And see, I got a little bit extra. So I got to pull a little taut. And it's all going to have to do with your fabric. Sometimes it gives and sometimes it doesn't. And this one's giving quite a bit here which is good. But you don't want to pull it so tight that you end up with a ripple in your border here along the edge where your binding is going. And that can happen if you pull it too tight. I'm going to do the same thing when we get down here to the corner.
I'm going to guess at my quarter inch. So let me come off. And then I'm going to repeat the process where I go out with this. Just like that. And then go back on itself. And after you've done this a few times, you'll get used to it. And it won't seem so foreign to you, which is what it will seem like right now. For the first time, when you do it a couple of times, it'll seem kind of odd. You feel like nothing lines up. Just take your time. I mean, you kind of know where it's going to go, where it belongs. See, I didn't even get that pinned correctly. So it has to go over a little bit like that. There we go. And then it's going to come straight on down here. So we can put one pin. And then I'll mark this with my finger because that's what I always end up doing. Just feel it and mark it to know where I'm going to put my needle in. And you can always put your needle in and pull your needle back out. You know, until you permanently put it in there, you're fine. There we go. Feel like this is too big, you can do a um, a placemat if you'd like. Even a mug rug would work. I mean, you can make your, your mug rugs can be any size you want. They don't have to be tiny. And I'm just about finished with my binding fabric on my little binder baby over there. I need to come off here. See, this is how much I have left. Not very much at all. Get off the edge. I find this coming off the edge works a lot better for me than it did before. And even if you came all the way to the end, that's fine too. Because you're not going back in it. When you sew. Okay, I'm going to put a pin in here for the top. It's just to hold it. Okay, so I can lay this down. Pinch that. Okay. Put my pin in here. Put my needle in front of my pin. Lower my foot. Okay. Since you've done the two and a half inch stitch, even if you make a mistake and you have to take it out, you can take it out and put it back in. It's no big deal. It's a lot easier than you realize when you're doing this. Because you don't have anything down permanent yet. And if you feel like you need to baste this first, you can do that too. Nothing says you can't baste it first and then go over it when you're done for permanency. Your basting stitch is just a lot larger than your regular stitch. Usually it's the biggest stitch that you can get on your sewing machine. Take the rest of that off. Fold it over. 
over. leave a large area right here because I want to be able to flip this to sew it so I'm not going to come up real close I'm going to do lock it into place right here so I can show you what I'm talking about let me lay this on the table so you can oh, yeah. see it better what you want to do your normal thing is you take your room I go from the end of this right here and I'm going to measure two inches and then I'm going to cut off the excess. So it'll only be two inch strip like this. And that's all we'll have, two inches, to put that together. So what I'm going to do, because I want you all to mark it first, if you're first time at this, this is my two, just go ahead and mark it before you cut it with your scissors, whatever. But because mine has so much extra pull, I'm going to go down to one and three quarters and I'm gonna hope that it is enough I've taken off because I don't want it to be wiggly I don't want my binding to make a ruffle I'll go ahead and I'll cut it with my scissors okay so this is what we have and now these two pieces have to be put together so I'm gonna take the stitches off of this end I'm going to leave this amount that way because I can already tell this is too tight for you guys to get an explanation of it. So I'm going to take these stitches out to about right here so I have extra room and then I'm coming back. All right, so I've got it back to here. Now, I take my left side. Now, keep in mind, it's the opening is facing upward, not towards me, away from me. I take the left side. I'm going to open it up so that I see the right side of the fabric. I'm gonna fold this over because I need them to be close together. So you can still see it. Here's how it comes off, straight off like that. Now, open it up and lay it so that the right sides are facing each other. So see, I opened it up and I'm going to lay it on here because we're going to do the same thing we did a minute ago. Go ahead, overlap it just a little bit. We're going to pin it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark it. So let me pin it here. Just like that. And I'm going to mark it from end to end, one corner to the other, just like that. Put another pin on it. You can faintly see my, my line right there. And then I'm going to sew across that. Now, the right sides are together. If this was not plain green fabric and it was a design, you wanna make sure that your right sides are together. And then when you sew that, it'll be on the inside. So let's go ahead and sew it. Before we do any cutting, we're gonna look at it to make sure it's correct because you wouldn't wanna cut that off because if you, let's say that you went ahead and you sewed this and it's incorrect. Once you've cut that off, you've lost your fabric, you can't go back with it. You should have seen me last night. Boy, what a mess I was having. Trying to get that to work, and it wasn't working because of all that stretch. I hadn't realized this, this fabric stretched so much. And I did not cut that um, binding on the bias. That is just straight out fabric. I didn't realize, um, I didn't have that much of a trouble when I was sewing my binding on, so that's why I wasn't realizing that it was so stretchy. And normally what you could do, like in my case, that whole one side was, uh, well, it ended up getting ruined because it got torn and everything. I mean, this is not that strong a fabric anyway. This is very 
Um, it's not that it's flimsy, but it just is not strong because of all the stretch. Okay, so here it is finished. And then what you want to test is you want to go like this and go, oh yeah, it does fit. But now see how, how this, let's make sure it's, in, okay, see how it's laying up? Okay, normally a regular piece of fabric that doesn't have a lot of give will not do that. But when I lay this down, that fabric actually goes ahead and lays in there. So I will be need to be real, real careful when I sew it this time that it doesn't stretch beyond the length that I have to sew this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to go ahead and cut this piece off because this is our extra, just like we did before. And it is correct. And then I'm going to repeat this when I do the other one, which I'm going to do the trim in blue. And then I will show you, so it's sort of like getting two for one. I don't have one there, so let's move that. Now, if you want, you can iron this, or you can take it. Now, you can turn it to the right, turn it to the left, open it up, whichever one you want to do. I'm just going to go ahead and open it and press it with my fingers. Not pulling on it at all, because I don't want any of that to stretch. Okay? And I'm not even going to pin it. I'm going to lay it down and start sewing it so that it doesn't stretch. I think I should have been a little bit better prepared with this fabric, but I didn't have that much choices of green. And I kind of like the way this one looked. Alrighty, so we're going to start it down here and I'm going to lock it into place. And just slowly sew it. Make sure nothing else is in the way here. And it looks like it's going to be doing okay. There we go. It's not stretching too much for me. No puckers or anything. Oop. I might have spoke too soon. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, let me back that off here. I just got a pucker right there. Heavens to Betsy. All right, let me take this out. I'm going to go back about an inch so I can try to tug on my back piece I really don't want to have a pleat in this piece of fabric right here all right so let me see if I can do it like this so let me Start here, lock it into place. Okay, now I'm going to tug on this back side as I sew. There we go. So then it avoided that little pleat there. Let's take a look at it here. Alrighty, here is the side that we just finished. Remember, I backed it up here. That's why I got a little piece right there. So that it would avoid that pucker right there. See that? So what I did was I took out about an inch and a half. And then I pulled on this back side as it came across this piece right here. That would have had the pucker. See? So now we're going to turn it and I'm going to show you what I do next. Alrighty, so now I took this over the ironing board. Ironed it all flat. Turned it each way. Just ironed it. And now we're going to turn it like this. And your main objective is to cover your stitching line. That's all it is. So take it, roll it over. You can either pin it or you can clip it. I am going to op take the option of clipping because there's so much stretch in this that I'm scared that I will literally stretch it. So we just clip it just like this. Put as many clips as you want on it. In my case, because this is such a stretchy piece of fabric, the more the better. 
And then when you're going to come down to the corner over here, right here, what you're going to do is you're going to make what looks like a mitered corner. Now, if you're right-handed, left-handed, it doesn't make any difference which way it goes. And once you do it, you'll keep doing it the same direction. So this is what I'm talking about. You lay it down. And then when you fold this one over, in my case, I folded this one over on top of that one. And if you look, as you roll this, you're rolling this fabric here. Because first you just fold it over. Just fold it over just like you were going to do it. Well, now it's it just happened to have met right in the corner. Let's say it didn't meet. I'm going to pretend it didn't meet. Like Let's say it, may, it meets like this. Let me get you closer so you can see it. Okay, let's say it meets like that. Can you see? Now let me get a pen so you can see. See how this is over here instead of down here in a corner? What you do, let me get a stronger, that, that pen is not going to work. Okay, let's make sure you're in the camera. Okay. So I take this, roll this over, and you want to take this fabric on this, this fabric here and roll it over, and you can tuck it in, roll it some more until it meets right there so that it does match up. So that when you sew, you're going to come along here and sew and then go that way. That'll make a perfect little corner right there. If you feel like you need to, instead of, clipping it you need to pin that then go ahead and pin that one corner and this is the way that I would pin it I would go like this go up and catch it like that and then you're going to be sure to come down and go right around there and you're just going to take your time all right we're going to come down this side and I'm hoping I don't have a lot of gapping. I'm trying to think, should I be using my... I might want to use my walking foot to make it better when it comes time to, to do this. That might be what it needs. Let's go down to the next end down here for you to see it. We're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to try to get a little closer. Let's see if I need to back up. There we go. Like that. And if it helps to put a clip on this side, then we'll put a clip on this side. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. We'll go down here. I'll have to back that up a little bit because what you're what you're doing is you're filling, which I'll have to fix this, but you're filling feeling for this little bump right here. You're filling this right here when you cover this. Okay? So you're doing two things. You're watching the line, of course. That's quite a bit off, so that's no big deal. You're not you're covering your line. There's no worry about that. But you don't want to get the the corner of your fabric bunched in there either. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to roll this so that it fits like that. And then I'm going to put a pen in it. Let me get my fat little finger out of the way. Let's get this tool back over here. We'll go like that and then we'll pin it. See if I can get it far back enough. And of course, when you come, when you get ready to to sew it right there, you're going to have to move that pin. I wonder if I could go this way. I can go this way with it. But you'll move that pin before you actually sew that corner. So let's go ahead and finish. I will finish uh, putting my clips on there, and then we'll sew it. All right. So I have my walking foot on here, and this is the way I have it set up. As you can see over here to the side, it's sitting on the fabric. 
Let me get my ruler so I can give you an idea how wide that. Okay, so I got my ruler so that you could see that my binding is about a half an inch. Just like that. So I need to make sure as I go down here, it remains that because of the size of that foot. So I'm going to be paying close attention to making sure that this remains the same size. Otherwise, this knowing this fabric is going to get end up getting either wider or smaller as I go along. So I'm going to go really, really slow as I sew this. And then when I get down here to the corner right here, I'll show you how I maneuver that. So like I said, I'm going to start out real slow and keep my measurement in there. Because I know all the way around it should be the same thing. And I'm not going to lock it into place. All I'm going to do is decrease my stitch when I first start out. And then go back up. And I'm going to make it a 3.0 because of the stretchiness of the fabric. And what I'm watching is not only am I watching the side of my foot here, but I'm also watching the distance between my needle and this fabric on the left. So I'm not watching right here in this area. I'm looking out this direction so I can have it come this way. Okay? You don't want to look right at your needle when you're working with this. I'm just trying to keep it all straight and just taking my time because the slower I go, the better I know it will turn out. If I go real fast and get in a hurry, it's going to mess up, guaranteed. And there's no reason to be in that big of a hurry. And I can always readjust this corner when I get to it also. And let me take my measurement again. It's looking good. And I'm trying not to pull on this because I don't want that to stretch. Remember, this is really bad with the stretching. And you can always do a double stitch if you want. And I'm actually doing this towards the back, which you could do it towards the front. On the, on the next one, I'm going to do it towards the front to show you the difference between doing it. I used to always do it on the back, but then I changed it to the front. But I want to do it both ways on this, just to show you the difference and what the outcome will look like. Okay, it's pulling up there for me. Let's Jump that one more time. There we go. Now we got it. I'm going to come one more time. Now I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to look at the other side. Okay, that looks fine. Take a couple of these off. Okay, I'm staying with my size. Now, a lot of people do not like to do the sewing. They like to do it hand, and there's nothing wrong with doing it hand or sewing. It's just going to be your preference. I used to do mine all by hand, and then I decided to do it by machine. And this is kind of the old school way because I don't do it on the back side anymore. I always do it on the front side, and I'll show you why when I get done with my blue one, which the one with the blue border. I won't be doing that on the camera. I'll just do a little bit of it on the camera to show you. And I'll show you the difference between the two. And then you can make up your mind when you're sewing what you want to do. That's why you're going slow.
corner. This is where you can adjust it, pull it in. Decrease my thread. I'm not going to backstitch it. Increasing my thread should be enough for this project. I went down to 1.2. So let's take a look at it. And I'm going to show you that front part I was talking about. Okay, so here is the part that I finished off right in here. So we'll just clip this. And then I'm going to flip this over to show you what the back side looks like. And that's what it looks like. It's gone along the edge there. But now notice, I have used, even though this is green thread, it still matches this because of the coloring on this, the green and the gold and everything. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to put this on the other table so I can spread it out for you to take a better look. Because this is not an even... I mean, yes, it's going up the border, but you can see how it gets off of the border. Well, I guess I don't need to go to the table. Okay. And see how it went right there? And this is the front of this. And if you don't want it to look like that, you don't make your border go on the back. So let me go ahead and do the blue one real quick, and I'm going to bring it back so we can compare the two. So now you line it up on the back side in order to be able to flip this over and stitch it on the front side when you're done. So that's what I'm doing now. All right, here we are with the blue one. I've left it open at the end here. We're going to overlap it two inches, remember? Oh, wait a minute, I'm two and a half, aren't I? Eeks, okay, so I start out at two and a half. I'm gonna go two and a fourth. Let me mark that right now. I was thinking I had a two inch like the last one. It was a two and a half inch, remember? This is two and a half inches. Oh, and this isn't even straight, so that's not gonna work. Ooh, let's straighten that out, cause that'll be way off. Okay, line it up, square it up here. Okay, let's, all right, here we go. Now we're going to go, two and a half is my normal size, which is right here. And I'm going to do two and a fourth. It would be normally two and a half, which is right here. But I want to take off a fourth. So I'm going to do this right here. This is where I'm cutting it. All right. I had to move the camera out of the way. So I am going to go on the left of my line. So there we go. Now remember, when it's not facing you, it's facing away from you. You put this side with this, the right side facing up, so it goes straight off the fabric here like this. And then you're gonna take this and you're gonna turn it, and we're gonna put right sides together like that. But you gotta pull this over because there's not enough fabric now. If you've done it right, there's not enough fabric. Let's put it that way. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pin it. And I'll tell you what, I don't know where I got this blue fabric, but oh my gosh, I can't stand it. I don't know where I got this stuff at. And it doesn't even feel like cotton. I mean, it's cotton, but oh my goodness, I, I'll tell you what it is. They're changing the sizing that they're using, which is your, I'm gonna say for lack of a better word, preservative, but it's not really preservative. It's what they put on it. This way, when they store that, whatever that stuff that's on it, I think it prevents bugs from eating it. We have it stored like in a warehouse. That's why it's important to go ahead and wash your quilts when you're done with them. Don't leave them sitting around. They'll get a chemical smell to them in case you haven't noticed it yet. But if you get enough of them around, you'll notice it. Let me go ahead and sew this. Alrighty, now it's done and now you need to test it to make sure it works and sure enough it did. So now you can go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to finish sewing it up and then I'm going to flip it to the right side to show you and then I'll sew it and then I'll show you the difference between the two. All right, so let me just go ahead and get that sewn real quick. 
Alrighty, so I've got it all pinned and clipped towards the front. Just like I did before. Except the other one was the back. This is the front. So I'm going to sew it and then we're going to put them side by side and take a look at them. Okay, so I have them both laying down here on the table. This is the back side of them both. So the difference between the two is here's the stitching when you did it that you got to see. So let's flip it over here. And that's what it looks like when you're done. And then on the other piece, here's what you finished with. And this is the part that you sewed. So the difference is it has the blue here. And then on the back side, I use the gold. And now, because of the way the blue is, you have a better idea of what it looks like on the back side. And it blends in because the gold is what was used for the stippling. So let me flip them over so you can see the front. Now here's the front. And another thing that is the difference is here's with a two inch binding and here is a two and a half inch. So that's quite a bit of a difference also. But there they both are. And Megan wants the one with the green binding on it. So I'm going to keep the one with the blue. So I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.